Okay, this is 8.05. Good evening once again, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in for another session, Design with EU. So, yeah, we're starting now. Um, for those that do not know, Design with EU is a weekly webinar series where we invite um, experts in different fields of design to come share their knowledge on different topics that we believe would help the community and community members grow, All right? So um, the last session we had was with um, Faye Sayo from Interswitch. And tonight we are having um, Victoria, which she is the um, accessibility evangelist. <laughs> I'm really excited for our session. So just a quick one. Um, she is um, a designer that basically, as the name implies, loves accessibility and basically has a lot of work done on that um, area. Right, she's also a Web3 and DeFi woman, right? Um, interestingly, she is um, in charge of a community of creatives, which um, basically exposed me to her, right? And I've been seeing what she's been doing on the space for a while now. So for the next couple of minutes, we'll be listening to um, Victoria speak on creating accessible products, right? So um, your notepad should be with you, your pen and paper, whatsoever is to take notes. Um, Victoria, the floor is yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Happy to have you here. And um, I'm happy to be joining Design With You this evening to discuss accessibility. So there's pretty much done an introduction. So I don't think I have to do an introduction again. So I'm just Victoria, I'm popularly called Toria, and I am an accessibility evangelist, which means I talk about accessibility, I advocate for accessibility, and I do that in speaking sessions just as this, and technical writing, and my designs. Okay, so I would want to share my screen to... We're using a slide. Uh, give me a second, cheers. Okay, so I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so creating accessible, accessible products, that's basically the topic, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. What are accessible products? For us to dive into this topic, we need to know what accessible products are. Accessible products are products that adhere to accessibility principles and guidelines. That's a whole lot of grammar. So let's break it down. For you to talk about accessibility, accessible products, you have to talk about accessibility, right? So what exactly is accessibility? Accessibility is building products while considering users who have been underrepresented and marginalized due to socioeconomic, racial, cultural differences, and most importantly, disabilities. So what I'm trying to say is that um, accessibility touches different spectrum yeah, and different demographic which includes socioeconomic, racial, cultural differences, but it's mostly specific for people who have disabilities. That is to say that people who have disabilities are 
the sector of people that are mostly considered when we are talking about accessibility and these are the people that we are going to talk we are going to consider or talk about this night right or make reference to this night this is not to say that these other people are not important they are important right but because accessibility is um essential to some and beneficial to all other people are included in the process right so now we're talking about disabilities what are what's what what is disability disability simply means um having limited ability compared to other people right when your ability to do something either do um your work your normal work or go about your daily activity or go about life in general when that the ability to do that is limited that's what you call disability right and this disability is mostly categorized into three sectors the sensory disability motor disabilities and cognitive disabilities right just as it's written here sensory disabilities eye defect hearing impairments speech impediment those are sensory disabilities motor disabilities paralysis of either one or four of the limbs or from excuse me or from your neck down which limits motion right that's the whole motor disability limits motion movement limits movement any disability that affects movement that's motor disability then cognitive disability this the disability is mostly ignored right especially in this part of the country if you're not physically impaired if they don't see that you're physically impaired nobody believes that you have a disability because nobody cares that you don't know how to communicate socially with people right and that is why most times it is overlooked some of the examples so here says that cognitive disabilities limit there is a mental disability that limits learning abilities social or social communications and things like that right so examples are dyslexia dementia autism right so like i said still in this part of the country it's hardly noticed it's hardly recognized and that is why it's possible for a child who is growing growing to have um, a disability like dyslexia and the parents are, are, are punishing each other oh you're slow you're dull in school you, you're not moving as fast as others whereas the child just cannot see words that are written so dyslexia simply means that the person does not recognize written words the person cannot read words because the words are scattered they're not written they don't see the way we see it right maybe let's say for instance for instance the word create is spelled c r e a t e s right but for someone who has dyslexia he, the person might see it as c a r e t e s or something else just scatter they don't they don't see the way we see it and that is a disability right and it affects their learning it affects their social um their communication and things like that and it's hardly noticed because like I said, people highly recognize it. And that's why we are creating this awareness today, right? How to include people like this in our day-to-day -day activities and especially as people who build products, digital products, how to include them while building, creating products, right? So for um, disability, um, sorry, for accessibility or creating accessible products, there are four principles, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about this evening, right? The the four principle is it's called poor. It's called poor because it's easy to remember. When you say poor, poor, it's easy to remember. It's an acronym, right? But it's it's, it's mostly mentioned poor because it's easy to remember. It sticks, right? And it helps us um remember remember the words faster right that's why it's called poor but it's p-o-u-r it's yeah it's an acronym so what does this mean p-o-u-r p for perceivable o for operable u for understandable r for robust right so this might seem like plenty plenty stories but we're going when we go 
get right into what these um, principles mean, you understand how they affect creating products that are accessible, right? Now, perceivable. Perceivable means your user interface components and the information should be presented in a way that users can assess it with ease, right? So oftentimes, designers would say things like, oh, the, the, user is, the user is dumb, right? The user is dumb, the person does not understand. Or it may say things like, um, it's the user that is the problem. This is something simple to understand, right? Why don't they understand it? Note, visual is not the only way is not the only way this information is perceived, right? It's not just visually that you send information or you put out information for your users to assess them. What does this mean? It means that for we that can see, we can assess a website just by maybe looking at the screen, scrolling down the screen and all that and we can move from one point to the other we can navigate from one point to the other right for we who do not have that visual impairment that disability it's easy for us it's visual is our is our suit right but for people who cannot see who use your product they use what we call a screen reader or brails how they perceive your information it is being read out to them they don't see it is read out to them so you have to design or build your product and not omitted why right? these are not neglected you might say oh why they are not they are not my target audience right people who have disabilities are over about 15 to 20 percent of people have one disability or the other and you might think oh they just blind people don't use the internet assessing your product so when they get to your website or they get to your web app or your mobile or whatever and they cannot assess it they dump it and you might say oh it's not my business they're not the ones i'm building product for but when you cannot um accommodate those demographic of people why building your product? It becomes a problem, right? We're going to be talking about talking about reasons why accessibility is essential at the end of this session. But I just wanted to chip in that it is it is important not to omit them and say, "Oh, they are not my target audience." Oh well, they are, right? Because accessibility is essential necessity to them. So you you cannot omit. 15 to 20 percent of people who are about two billion of the world's population it's cruel right and a law has even been enforced that these people should not be omitted it might not be in nigeria uk is in countries like the us is in countries like canada right so your your product can actually be flagged down and you pay fines if you don't make your product accessible we'll be talking more on that when we'll be talking about the importance right so implement implementation of um accessibility implementation of accessibility right one to text for non-text content right provide accessibility um, alternative to text for non-text content, which about not everybody sees or assesses or perceives your your product visually, right? So, read it. If I'm not going to be able to look at it, actually, there should be an all-text um, alternative that helps me listen to it, right? or use my braille right but it should be then ensure that information can be converted to other formats like i said before speech audio braille print etc right so next operable 
right? Users must be able to operate your products and it must not it must not require a complicated navigation. There's a lot of cycle on this. <laughs> I apologize. I rushed this, right? But just listen to what I'm saying. Don't look so much on the screen, right? It must not require a complicated navigation, right? If someone is assessing your product, it should not require a complicated navigation. It's, there should not be it should not be complicated because your user is not stupid. Yeah, your product just it just does not work. You might be like, oh, it's simple, just go to checkout and pay. It's not difficult. Well, your product is shitty. Sorry for my French. It it means that your product does not work. It doesn't mean that your 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 user is stupid, right? So implementation, make your functionalities keyboard accessible, right? Because you want to make sure or make it possible for people, including users who have disabilities, to be able to operate your products. You have to make it keyboard accessible. And this is actually a very important part of implementing accessibility, right? Accessibility is beneficial to all. In the long run, the, the implementation of keyboard accessibility benefits everybody people who do not who do not own a, a mouse that's why people that's why people always argue oh trackpad and mouse trackpad and mouse keyboard and mouse it's because it's accessible for that for you to be able to use just your keyboard to do what you want to do that someone else is using a mouse for and then you find out that you're you're enjoying the luxury of being able to do that because the product has been made accessible for the user who has a disability, right? That's one way to implement it. Right. Understandable. Users must be able to comprehend information as well as use the interface. Copies and instructions must be clearly written. No technical jargon and no ambiguous words, right? So if you're going to be given in such a way that you want to give off instructions, you want your user to do this and this and this, let the instructions not be complicated, right? And in cases where you need to write copies for the UX writing or people who do UX writing here, if you're going to write copies for your, for your digital product, let it be clear and understandable. Don't complicate things. Don't use jargons. Don't use technical jargons. Your user is not a programmer. He's not a designer. Don't use just design words that you know that they will not understand. Use clear words. If they have acronyms, define those acronyms, right? Me, right? So impl and implementation, label properly, right? Let's say, for instance, you want to you're building a product that has a navigation bar and you have your home you have your this you have your that you have your that using icons alone does not cut it right it doesn't serve anybody because now i have to if and if it's a, a, a case where you use a whole a different icon from what i regularly see on other products now i have to first use the first three, four times I will use your product to so figure out what these icons mean. Then till I'm now used to it, then I know, okay, this is what this means, this is what this means, this is what. There's no need for that. There's no need to stress your user, increase their cognitive load and make them overthink like before they have to perform a transaction or navigate from one point to the other, they will not try to figure out what this is and what that is because you do not label properly. There's no need for that, right? Another way is use captions, right? If for any reason you're building a media, you're building a product that has a media, maybe you're building um, a product where people can watch online courses or you're building a product that has videos, please provide captions and trans. I can hear. Right? It's not everybody that wants to 
assess that product that can be an example of a product that correctly implements accessibility as it concerns captions is right with youtube you can watch anything you can watch whatever you want to work watch and put on your captions and it works right there are also products like netflix you can watch if there are people here that watch foreign movies maybe japanese and movies you're able to enjoy it because it's captioned now you see where um, accessibility actually accommodates people who have um a, a native difference right they have a language difference now it's it's taking care of that that is accessibility not only is it helping people who have a language it's also helping the deaf right people who cannot hear so they just have to read whatever it is and they enjoy the the media or the video as much as the person that is listening to it now another important thing this part gets tricky because some des some designers actually sign up or sign in feature should have clear instructions so if for instance you want um, a user to log in and you want the user to log in with eight characters and you want the characters to have symbols and numbers clearly state it before the user starts imputing their their passwords or yeah or their information don't wait for them to put it and then it rejects them like five or four maybe two times before you now say oh this is incorrect right if possible put step by step instructions that show oh um put its characters let the characters have the numbers let it be let the first one be an uppercase letter right and if they have successfully um, carried out carried out that instruction let them get a notification that it's correct just move faster with whatever they're doing right that's one way to implement it as well the next one which is the last one is robust your content was content must be robust enough that it can be interpreted reliably by a wide variety of user agents including assistive technologies so user agents are software that you can use to pay right it can be um a screen reader right so it should you should build it in such a way that it will accommodate assistive technologies like a screen reader right let your product be accessible to voice over to voice overs right let's let's let it be able let siri be able to um assess your product right whatever product it is you're building let me be able to say oh siri put my password or siri do this or maybe not siri maybe i'll um um google's assistant or whatever voice over or screen reader that is available on that device right let it be able to assess your products i know this is probably a little bit complicated maybe high tech high tech right it's fine you get there in time but what's important is that your products or the, your product follow this success criteria, these three level success criteria and compliance, right? Everything I just said, the P-O-U-R, the POR, everything, the guidelines work with the success criteria that is organized in these three levels, right? And at least your product should at least get to level two, which is level A, A. At least level A is basic, right? Level A is good contrast, good typography good layout those basic basic things at least as a as a designer who who has gotten a little bit of experience you should be able to have passed level a right then level 
AA, it's maybe the sta- it's the standard level. AA is like really technical, but if you can pass level AA, that's good enough, right? Doesn't mean that you cannot start to get to level triple A, but if you have double A, that's the standard, right? So everything I've said here, the summary, this is the summary, right? The P-O-U-R seems like stories, but this is basically the summary. How can a developer, so we we'll learn how a developer, a designer, and a UX writer can implement accessibility or build accessible products, right? And this is how this is designed with you but in case we have aspiring developers or maybe a developer is here by chance this is it implement designs as sent by the designers this is always one of the issues designers and developers are always having because you people are always fighting but i'm not going to talk i, w- I won't speak further on it so they will not cancel me but just as sent by designers right to text trapping Three, I'm, I'm going to run through it because I believe I, there are probably no developers here, right? Focus points. I want to pass this, but this is important because the user is using your screen, your screen reader and a keyboard. They need to know when they've gotten to a particular page in your, in your, um, a particular page in your product, right? There should be a focus point. Keyboard accessibility, we already spoke about that and the way to do it is using semantic html element i know you want to um improvise and customize but make sure you use semantic html element and reduce the use of divs right because the screen reader does not read that screen readers and braille make it make your products able to access screen readers and braille use a r i a area I'm not going to go deep into that because I want to believe there are no developers here. But if you have questions on it, please send me a DM. I will talk about it later. So let's pick, let's talk about the one that concerns us, right? Designers. Designers. How do you implement accessibility to build an accessible product, right? One, clear layouts and design. Clear structure of your headings, your paragraphs, your tables and your forms, right? Your layouts should be clear, okay? Because people who cannot see use screen readers and keyboards. So your, your layouts should be arranged. They should not be confused. Your H1, your headings should be labeled. Your paragraphs should be labeled. Your tables properly labeled. Your forms properly labeled because these are like the complicated ones. If you don't, you might like rush into it and you don't label them properly, right? You might just like put the name on, on top or just do it anyhow. But label it in a way that it's the um the screen reader will be able to announce to whoever is using your product that is that ha- that has a visual disability to be able to assess it who do not have visual disabilities let's say people who can see still let your forms be labeled properly let it not be confusing so that i will know when i should impute my name and when i should impute my number don't mix it up don't confuse it use clear words right color and good with good contrast this can be a little tricky right but there are accessibility plugins on figma that can help you check they help you pick your colors, drop it and check, and you can pick the best um, and most accessible color palettes for your project, right? Having to do with color can be complicated if you don't study properly. So if you find it complicated, there are plugins like the color contrast plugin on Figma. You can use it and it will help you out, right? Large links, buttons, and controls. Let your links be big. Don't make it so small. Don't use only color to identify that this is a link. It can be confusing. Please make it clear. Your buttons as well, they should be properly designed. And your controls also. We already talked about labeling. Please label properly. 
Sis, use good font types and good sizes for different screen choices. Make them adjustable. So there are different, there are different um, si font sizes for different screens. For websites, the size is different for mobile apps. So please, I think the lowest you should use for your mobile app should be 16, 14, 16. For your mobile, uh, the lowest you should use is 14, 16, 14, 16, right? I know you want to um, do hierarchy and all of that, but font is not the font size is not the only way to show hierarchy, right? You can use color, you can use er any other thing, right? But make sure the size of your your design is not too small and not too big, right? Make sure they are good size and especially not too small and make it adjustable. Now there are features in products where you can just go to the settings and maybe increase the size or reduce the size according to you um, your choice or your preference, right? I've seen it a lot in eBooks, right? And I think it's there in other features as well. If you can make your product have that, that's wonderful. Let your um, users be able to choose, pick a, a font size of their choice according to their abilities, right? I already talked about closed captions and transcript. Please always make provisions for that, especially when you're building for media, okay? Um, your media player should have pause, stop captions and adjust video, right? I think a lot of, a lot of um, media products have implemented that right you're able to pause and play so my room taking it up a notch to make the screen able to push when you push it you're able to fast forward or take it back or next by just tapping on your screen that's a good um improvement and update especially for people who have visual impairment so they don't have to do too much to look for where the pause button is or the pause yeah to look for where the pause and play button are right this is like a good update for implementing accessibility and if you're going to build a product that's a media in future it's something you might want to adapt right then this one quite popular even social media are adapting it currently all test and effective use of images and illustrations right x formerly known as twitter has an all test feature encourage you to put all test i know it can be tiring like you want to post picture you now want to like add caption add all test to explain what is happening in the picture it can be but try to accommodate people who have disability right try to think about them try to put them in your shoes or put yourself in their shoes rather and with practice it's just like putting captions on your post with practice you'll be able to do that right so that's for designers basically there are more there are more but this is basically like uh, a summary to how to start i mean when you start designing for accessibility you start small and before you know it you want to do it on a larger scale right so for ux writers um your content should be clear and understandable we already talked about that less jargon um less ambiguous words it should not be unnecessarily long because you're going to um stress people who have cognitive abilities so people who have adhd they don't remember things as much right so if it's too long, they read this part and then they forget, they go to the end and they forget, it can be stressful. It can even make them abandon whatever it is you're showing them. Whether it's articles you're writing, whether it's copies for products that you're writing, make it short and straight to the point and make it understandable, right? There should be clear notification and feedback. Users should be sure they are doing the right thing at every step. Error messages should always be available and understandable. I mentioned part of this for the sign up page, like the sign up, um, yeah, your sign up screen for your mobile app or for your web app or for whatever app, right? Your sign up screen, there should be clear feedback. If 
they have used eight characters let them know if they have used um uppercase letter let them know if they have used symbols let them know so they know that they're making progress right so always be always um design feedback right an example of feedback is your whatsapp when you post on your status it tells you sent right it says sent right it gives you feedback now you know you've sent it if you want to undo it you undo it and they tell you it has been undone right they need feedback at every point so as much as possible create designs that give a lot of feedback to your users right communication helps them navigate your pro your products easily okay error messages as well um and solutions followed by the error message so let's say for instance you log into a website and it shows an fof error right either maybe because your um your internet is not working or you maybe you're off the internet or the product has changed their screen whatever it is give the information let them know offer solutions right that will help that will help them navigate your product so this is pretty much it and i said i was going to speak about the importance of accessibility i already spoke a little bit on it but i'm going to speak a bit about it again one the cup cut effect i mentioned it earlier accessibility is essential to some beneficial for all right so while you're designing for people who have disabilities other people enjoy it in the process right let's say for instance the elevator the elevator was originally designed for people who cannot walk but now we are enjoying the elevator right it is not a convenience for us we don't want to use the stairs we just use the elevator right the slide stairs for people with wheelchairs right it's, it was originally for people with wheelchairs but we um women who are carrying nursing mothers who are carrying their babies trolleys can use can comfortably pass through that place people who are riding their bikes people who are riding their skateboards they can still pass there so it's not like a, a convenience for them right and so many other things that indicate cup cut effect right another thing is it improves your brand right improves your brand and your business when you have more engagement more money okay and if you can create a solution for people who have disabilities people trust you to create solution for others right because if you can do something for for people who have disabilities we assume that you can solve problems of people who who do not right given that it could be less complicated okay another thing is legal reason i mentioned it earlier and i'm going to mention it again it is legal in some countries like the uk canada the usa to implement accessibility if your product is not accessible it can be flagged down you pay fines right you can even lose your product in the process it might not be in nigeria yet but it is outside and many of us as designers we build especially freelance designers or designers working with people internationally we build products for these people outside right and as a designer, you might say, oh, it's not your business. You've, you've designed what you want to design and you've gone your way. But it's not going to be cool if your product is flagged down or you have legal issues because you do not do the right thing, right? So that's basically like the three reasons. There are more, but this is like the three main reasons why um, accessibility is essential. Right, so that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about accessibility, um, join our community on Twitter. We also have a community on WhatsApp. But join us on Twitter, send us a DM. We can send you the link to your DM to join our community on WhatsApp, right? And also, let's connect. Connect with me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have questions about accessibility, Reach out to me. I, I will be willing and excited to answer you. That's all for today's class. Thank you.
Wow, that was <clears throat> that was very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much, Victoria. So um, I believe we all enjoyed um, the session. It was like an hour well spent. So right about now, we'll be taking some questions, one or two questions. So if you have a thing or two to ask for clarity, um, please unmute your mic or raise your hand so we could address that. Are there any questions? Okay, so um, because I'm from my end, um, Victoria, so I do a lot of um, UX audits, right? And I tend to also um, try to incorporate accessibility in my audits, right? So um, from your own perspective or point of view, how would you conduct an audit, right, um, using accessibility as your major focus? So I, I, I haven't conducted the UX audit, but I have done accessibility testings and audits. And um, I use, obviously, the WCAG guideline, right? And I use accessibility tools like the wave evaluation tool. I use my screen reader, my NVDA, to um, go through a website or a product um, and check for accessibility fails and passes and places where um, adjustments should be made. And we have like um, a a sheet, <laughs> a sheet or a right where we take records, right? So we check the website, we check the product using evaluation tools. Like I mentioned, there's Wave, there's Axe, right? And then, of course, the screen reader. I try to go through the product and try to check how someone who probably has a disability, maybe a visual disability or hearing disability, will be able to access your products after the testings, the testings are recorded and then feedback is given to the developer and the design team, the development and the design team to make corrections. So that's basically it. Awesome. Okay, thanks a lot um, for that, Victoria. So I think that's pretty much all we have um, for tonight's session. Indeed, it was really impactful. Oh, okay. Gaspar, please. You can speak. You can speak. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, Victoria, um, I really appreciate your session. It was well, like, it was well detailed, okay? And thanks for the knowledge that I shared. All right. My question is on that, um, what is it called? Accessibility guidelines. Um is there a place maybe we can maybe read up more about the guidelines? Because you talked about three different levels, um, level A, level AA, and level AAA. If there are more things that like we need to know about the international league guidelines that you need to know, especially the WA, um, WCAG stuff, if there are more, um, if there is a place a site or an a document you can read so that will be more enlightened on it i really appreciate it. thank you there is the um, main wcag website you can just click w you can just type wcag.com on either your safari or your chrome and it will bring the document for you now the thing is the document is large. <laughs> it's actually like it's plenty. There are a lot of things. Like if you want to read it, you cannot read you, you can read it, but you will not read it like a storybook. Excuse me, you will not read it like a storybook. Right. So for me, the way I I got to learn, I started reading, I started with articles, right? Started reading articles, then books, right? Before I decided to start taking if official courses on it. So you can read articles that will just help you. The articles that break it down, 
right? So they don't, it's not as complicated as it is on the website. So just maybe go to Medium and click on accessibility, accessibility guidelines. I think I have an article I've written on those. I have an article I've written on those. So I can just maybe, um, you can send me a message on LinkedIn. I can just share some of my own articles. You maybe start with that, then check out other articles. articles. Maybe, maybe me. Um, then from there, you can, if you want to go further, into it you can maybe watch videos on youtube or maybe pay for courses <laughs> i take courses but the thing is i haven't seen any cheap accessibility course they are really expensive but just start with um articles right if you find them very interesting and you want to go deeper try books watch youtube videos you get a hang of it at least you get a summary the basic knowledge of how to navigate it Hope I answered your question. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, 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 it did. Okay, thank you very much. I think um, I wouldn't, like you said, um, the one on the site is kind of bulky. And at my level now, I'm still starting out, still um, gathering some knowledge. So I think I don't need the one that is too bulky. I might need something that is more simplified. So I think I'll DM you on um, Twitter. I think that one will be much easier for me. My LinkedIn is not premium yet. So I'll DM you on Twitter so that maybe you can share with me the articles. Thank you. It's fine. It's You're fine. welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So um, I think that's the end of tonight's session. So this was recorded and will be available in the next few days on our YouTube channel. So um, stay tuned. Yeah, thanks again, Victoria, for the session. Um, first man is raising his hand. First man. Hi, sorry, sorry. I just thought of something now before you're about to close. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Eugene. Hi, Victoria, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can. I can hear all right, you. All right, cool. Okay. So thank you for the session on, on accessibility. I think I followed from the beginning and uh, it was quite insightful. So I have like just like a very short question. Yeah. So um, I would like to know, like, maybe in terms of time, and when you're working with, let's say, uh, Deb, because I know when you are trying to design for accessibility, you're also like working, you know, hand in hand with devs or the development team to you know ascertain maybe the length or the duration it takes to probably build the future so how do you basically incorporate that um what's it called this accessibility thing into like your design process and basically you working with the dev with in, in terms of time so basically how does it affect you know the duration you spend working on your design and the entire feedback process between the dev team thank you It all depends on the team, right? Depends on how fast the team is and the, the how fast they're working, right? For, but for collaboration, the thing is, you could be a good accessibility designer. You could be a good designer that implements accessibility. Then your developer is not, as, is not implementing accessibility. Then it becomes a problem. That's where communication comes in. So for whatever decision you want to make, for, for whatever design decision you want to make, you have to, co you have to communicate it with your developer and let them know why it is essential. And that's why when I was talking about, when I was um, listing stuff for the developers, the first thing I said is implement the design that the, the designer sends to you. So in case the designer is implementing accessibility, so you don't go and do what is in your mind and then you now scatter everything. So you have to communicate with your developer and your develop and that's why this awareness is for everyone, designers, developers, UX writers. So the developer as well should also implement accessibility while he is building his product. So it's all the collaboration all works with communication, but for the timing, it depends on the team right because if it's a team a larger team the obviously they might work faster than a smaller team 
right? Or a team that's a more experienced team and, and all of that, right? So, right, that's, that. I, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, cool. I think it's basically relative, like you said, and there are a lot of things to consider. So, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. So I think Gospower is having an issue sending you a DM. Is there another means he can reach you at? Um, um let me let me just um get my blog link and send it to the chat here so that he, it does it's not complicated for him. Then from there he can check out all the articles I've written on okay. on accessibility. That hope that works. Let me just search it. 